Welcome to Besties Books and Brews, where we're not afraid to indulge in some steamy stories. So whether you are naughty or nice or somewhere in between, grab a glass of your favorite brew and settle it in with your favorite besties. Hey everyone, welcome back to Besties Books and Brews. How's everyone doing? Great. Hello. Hello. So our lovely ladies are back and this week we're super excited because we are going to be reviewing Pucking Around by Emily Rath and it was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, yeah, we'll get into that. But before we do, (laughs) as per usual, what's everyone drinking tonight? I got water. (laughs) Hydration station. Yes. So I have a Vizzy um, Mimosa, and this one is Strawberry Orange. Wait, they have different types of mimosas? Yeah, they have. So Strawberry Orange, they have Orange Pineapple, Peach Orange, and I forgot what the other one is. Yum. Mm. Yes, yes these delicious. are delicious. And then I also have my water. Did you get a new cup? <laughs> no, this is <laughs> this is my uh, my shaker. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I stole a page out of Alyssa's book today. I have a white claw. Black, black cherry. cherry. Nice. I need to give you mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> and I have a frozen Stop. cocktail called Fireworks. Ooh, Whoa. That looks cool. Happy Fourth of July. Yeah. Fourth of July, people. Yes. Oh, that looks so good. Is that yeah, from that like does. Walmart too? Is that one yep. of those? Yep. Well, I didn't get mine from Walmart because I don't have a Walmart around here. But yes, it's one of the little bag ones that come in the frozen section. And I'm like, yes, give it to me all. Like, okay. So I guess I'm going to have to go visit Walmart and go get me some frozen drinks. Yeah. yeah. So once again, we are going to be reviewing Pucking Around by Emily Rath. I'm going (laughs) to hand it over to Alyssa to give us her amazing summary review as always. Alrighty, so this one's going to be pretty short because I mean, the (laughs) summary is pretty short on this. But if you tuned in for our That One Night episode, this is a sequel full length book to That One Night. And if you haven't tuned in for That One Night episode, (laughs) then go do that and then come back here. (laughs) So that one starts with, (laughs) get it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So Pucking Around is a why choose hockey romance, which means all the spice, all the spice. This book was spice incarnate. (laughs) So that one night started with Jake and Rachel, which are two of our characters that carry over to Pucking Around. But that one night ended where Rachel leaves Jake in the hotel and she assumes she's never going to see him again. When Pucking Around starts, she ends up getting the Barkley Fellowship that she thought she had lost out on. And which team does she end up going to be the doctor for? The Jacksonville Rays, which is where Jake plays. And I mean, they meet again within like a few days on her first day, right? I think it was her first day. Yeah, her first first day. day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When she was getting her car. Like HR is showing her around and he sees her in the parking garage. Immediately, he doesn't recognize her in a way. I think he was like too caught up in his head. I think but he then, was like looking down or uh, into his phone. He, yeah, he wasn't like, was paying attention. Okay. Well, when in her mind, she saw him look at her and he didn't like do it right away. But I liked his explanation. He was kind of like, I wasn't looking for you. So I didn't see you, which basically. Sounds Which like a makes guy, sense. A guy explanation. I mean, it makes sense, right. though. <laughs> I mean, she also had glasses and, you know, yeah. she, so she did look different. Mm-hmm. I mean, she if was it professional for, and yeah, not as works, sexy as she right. was that night. If it works right. for Superman, it works for her, but go on. Oh, true, true, true. No. <laughs> All right. So we get the reunion between her and Jake, but this story is not just about them, too. So Jake's best friend is Caleb. Caleb picks Rachel up from the airport when she first flies into Jacksonville. So they meet that way. And then they end up being neighbors um, at the kind of lodgings that the Rays provide the staff. Um, they get a little bit closer there and then one thing leads to another lots of story in between where it starts out with Jake and Caleb sharing her and then along the way she is building the relationship with another man Elmari 
So this story is kind of just their journey, how they all find their way to each other, um, how they go about having this relationship in private, and then eventually bringing the relationship out to the to the light. Um, they all lead very public lives. So it was um, a struggle for them to be able to want to share the relationship with everybody. Um, I thought it had a really good message of accepting. And I think it's rare to find such a good polyamorous relationship. I, I This was a really good one. So on that note, what did you guys rate it? Um, On a five scale, it was a 20. <laughs> <laughs> I, each one of the characters get um a five star so yeah um as far as spice out of this world another like, 20 yeah <laughs> another 20 so yeah we'll get into it i'm i'm ready to get into it but it was a it was amazing it was <laughs> superb so i actually gave the book four stars um, and mainly because for me, there was not enough plot. I feel like the plot was only like the last like few chapters, but, um, but it was still good. It was still very engaging and I really enjoyed it. Spice rating literally off the charts. Like I can't <laughs> even put a number to it. It's just, whew, ciao. <laughs> yeah, this was what we needed after so many yeah. slow burns with yeah. one spicy scene. Oh, this yeah. was like the book gods was like, here you go. Yeah. The book gods sure. named Sarah. She was like, here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> it's me. Um I mine are five and five. Yep, off the charts. I love the book. Um, love the spice. I gave it 4.5 stars. I'll get into why I took the 0. 0.5 off. But like, I thought the book was fucking excellent. And the spice was like a million out of five. <laughs> mm-hmm. As everybody said. <laughs> Alyssa, yeah. where's the spice? We're going to do where's the spice a little bit different on this one. Okay. <laughs> because we... it needs to be done differently. <laughs> <laughs> I was keeping tally throughout the whole book. So where it actually starts is with a phone sex scene so not even like them actually together but it was still hot as hell so it starts on page 103 chapter 18 but there were five different types of couplings in this book there was all the all the dick and vagina and all all of it all of it (laughs) everything you can possibly imagine Mm -hmm. so we got mf there were four scenes mfm there were three scenes M M F. There were two scenes, one of which was DVP. Yes. Oh yeah. Was... We're all nodding. <laughs> <laughs> there was an M M scene. There, one of those, and the M M F M, where everybody was involved in all the holes, was four scenes. Yeah. Total was fourteen scenes. I mean, hello, lady. Everything that, were, that I needed. The, and they were like <laughs> chapters long. Yes. yes. <laughs> we had no short. The only no. one that was too short for me was the MM where Jake and Caleb finally like admit their feelings. I'm like, I was so pissed they got interrupted. So was I. Yeah, me too. So was I. But other than that, they were all chapters. Like even <laughs> so I'm seeing 14 scenes, but like, you know, the initial scene where um Rachel and Omari get together and they first have sex like normal sex Mm -hmm. and then like that kind of ends and then they have anal sex yes technically two Two. scenes but like right counted it as one because it was like continuous but like technically it's two yeah there were multiple scenes like that where it was like one thing happened that kind of stopped and then like something else happened but just if not i would on a technical right yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) on a technicality (laughs) so from this point we're gonna try our best not to give like um the ending of the book i'd say but we will be talking in length about the book like specific scenes the characters things that happen between them so if you haven't read it yet and you don't want to be spoiled about anything that happens in this book (laughs) thank you sarah (laughs) if you don't want to be spoiled then just you know click out right now and then after you've read it come back and listen let's start with I know it's hard to narrow these down, guys. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We're going to do a favorite quote, a favorite spicy quote, and a favorite spicy scene. 
or if you guys have other types of quotes, feel free to mix it up. I've just, yeah, I honestly, I know if we, we could sit here and talk about quotes from this book all night. <laughs> yeah, we really could. <laughs> Who wants to go first? I'll go first. So the okay. first one that I I had to, because I laughed out loud was when she arrived in Jacksonville and everything just started going everywhere. And she's like, my heart drops out of my chest. Someone bury me in the earth right here in this airport loading zone and make sure to dig a hole for Tess right next to me because I plan to haunt her to death. <laughs> Surfer boy is holding a dildo, my dildo. It was a gag gift from Tess and it most certainly a gag that she packed it for me. It has to be because the dildo is large and purple and shaped like an octopus tentacle. <laughs> that's a great way to start off the book <laughs> i mean can you just imagine you meet this hot guy for the very first time and then all of a sudden everything is just flying all over the place and he's just with your dildo in his hand standing there yeah. like shell shocked he like, doesn't know what the hell to do with it <laughs> and then because of the size of it he's like holy hell pretty much yeah that was like that was a good one yep yeah. And then as far as, as my sexy quote, this was when they were, I believe, in the closet in the club. And Jake tells Rachel, he's like, what a good fucking girl. You're squeezing me so tight. And then Caleb goes, fuck, get inside her. Caleb growls, his arms flexing, testing the hold of the belt. I need to watch you fuck her. Hurricane, don't you dare look away. I just want to point out while you're reading about it going tight, your hands like tight and t- <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping a G, people. We're keeping a G. I can't tell you what else tightened. <laughs> Since when do we keep a G? Never. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a favorite spicy scene? Oh, Jesus Lord. <laughs> um, I honestly can't pinpoint one, but... Yeah, no, I can't pinpoint one. I love them all equally. <laughs> and equally and differently because each one was, you know, every one of them were all completely different, but they all brought something unique to the bedroom. So, yeah, I'm not choosing. Yeah, I agree. There wasn't one where, you know, when there's like a lot of spice scenes, sometimes it can feel repetitive and you get kind of like bored by it. I know yeah. that sounds weird, mm-hmm. but if it's like, so much and it's the same but she kept it really fresh which right yeah. them so funny mm-hmm. that you say that because i wasn't getting bored of it but i felt like rachel where i felt like i was oversexed i was like i don't know <laughs> if i can take any more of this because <laughs> i'm just like so aroused right now this is not even funny like it just kept getting better and better and kept going and it was never ending and i was just like holy shit, I can't catch my breath. And I'm not even there. <laughs> mentally. Right. Yeah. right. Mm-hmm. We're all mentally, Rachel. Yep. <laughs> I want to be physically Rachel, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want that possibility. <laughs> we'll definitely get more into that. That's one of our questions that we have, actually. <laughs> well, I can go next. I'm actually just going to read one quote. Um, this Jake is one of my all-time favorite characters. He's the golden retriever of the group. Um, So he says, I want to wrap her in my arms and never let go. I want to wear her t-shirts to bed like a lovesick fool. Okay, so there's no way they'll fit me, but I could take two and cut them up and sew them back together. Or Caleb can do it for me. He's good with sewing machines and... And then he starts thinking something else. (laughs) All right, Sarah, what was your spicy quote? Um, I don't have one. Uh, and I loved all the spicy scenes, the same as Nikki. I can't pick one. Phenomenal. A++. All right. Lori? So, I'll be honest, I couldn't find a spicy quote only because I got so invested in the spicy scene that I forgot I was looking for quotes. (laughs) (laughs) So, So, there's like a huge gap between like the beginning of the book and like the end of the book where I actually pick quotes out. But, um, one of my favorites and and it kind of plays on like the whole jake has a lot of like really funny but not meant to be funny (laughs) quotes yes so um one of my favorites was towards the end of the book he says you know i love you rachel i may not say it as fancy 
fancily as Mr. European accent over here, which thanks for that, by the way, he adds at Elmari with a glare. You don't speak 10 words together for weeks, but then the two times you do speak, you make speeches that should be printed out and sold with a free at-home pregnancy test. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to pick that one. <laughs> I loved it because it's true. Like he would, he would say these things that I'm just like, oh my. Yes. Like Like when, when uh, Rachel fucked Caleb for the first time and he was like, oh my God, you fucked her, didn't you? With your Android dick. (laughs) (laughs) Get this. So that was, that was my favorite quote. Couldn't find a spicy quote. Love all the spicy scenes. Like I can't pick just one. And my favorite overall scene was when she first arrived at the airport and just like she was just a hot mess and like everything that just happened I was cracking up like out loud I'm like that's some shit I would do yep (laughs) yep and Nikki would be the one packing the tentacles yes she absolutely would (laughs) I sure would that evil smile she's got on right now absolutely I would pack the biggest (laughs) kong dong ever in that bag (laughs) you would pack that black one whether the black mom or the king kong dong oh my god that (laughs) thing is scary Mm -hmm. (laughs) all right so my favorite quote is also from jake because like you said he just had like the funniest lines that were just out of left field i i i can even do a uh like honorable mention one about the frisbee golf (laughs) all right so this is when mars and him are in the car after the whole jersey flip thing and they're both like super pissed off and mars kind of like asks him asks him (laughs) ask jake if he wants to fuck him he goes mars i have zero interest in fucking you or getting fucked by you are you kidding the idea of your monster cock coming anywhere near me is literally terrifying honestly I don't know how Rachel does it. I don't have the courage to bottom for you. And I totally lack the death wish to try and top you. (laughs) He gestures between us with a frantic hand wave. So are we good? We done here? You need this super weird conversation to go on any longer? (laughs) Oh my God. Jake is like the equivalent of like a best friend and a boyfriend, husband, like everything you could possibly want in a man is what Jake is. Yeah. he And I loved his like two sides. So he had that golden retriever, like puppy dog side. And then he had his defense hockey, like dirty mm-hmm. talking. Like like he was just all rolled into one perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, okay, I do. So, sorry. sorry. I, I do have like an honorable mention. I'm not going to say the whole thing, but the scene where Rachel is in the club and she confronts Aspen. Yes. And like asteroid like a- apple asteroid asphalt <laughs> like <laughs> she like purposely was calling her like everything but as I was cracking up. <laughs> that was really funny. Go I on. love that I love that whole scene. All yeah. right, since since yes. we're talking about honorable mentions, I'm going to do the first <laughs> one cuz it was fucking funny and I feel like I'm going to use this in the future. <laughs> So, you know, when they were talking about um, how they were going to go home and they would meet the parents or whatever, right? And they were like, oh, you've never brought a guy home before? And she was like, well, you know, there was never a reason to unless, you know, they were they wouldn't stay around long enough to. And Jake was like, don't finish that sentence. He's like, look, I know you had guys before us, but here's the new house rule. Frisbee golf rules apply to all past relationships. And she was like, frisbee golf rules? He goes, yeah, you know, like. Do I know that Frisbee golf is a thing? Yeah, of course I do. But do I want to learn a single other detail about it, no matter how big or small? Hell to the fucking no. <laughs> oh Jake God. was by far like the funniest. He like, was. He really he was, was hysterical. He, yeah. he was he was so good. Mm-hmm. Literal laugh out loud. He really was, yes. I think this is like one of the few books that I've actually read and actually laughed out loud. Yeah. And that's very hard for me. Like there, there have been books I've read and I'm like, oh, that was funny. But this was like, I was cracking up Mm -hmm. and it stems from the, um, that one night, as Alyssa mentioned before, I was just laughing hysterically on the cruise ship. And she's like, what's going on? It's just, the writing was amazing and it's so comical. Yeah. And it starts right off the bat too. Like you guys said, that airport scene happened within like the first few chapters. So right, it just, yeah, it keeps you going. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had one spicy quote because this one grabbed me by the it's... lady bits. <laughs> so 
when uh Elmari and her first have sex, he um Elmari says, I will not wear a condom. This is a claiming ruckus. I will I want to see my cum dripping from all your holes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. My favorite spicy scene is when they all are having sex and Jake finally fucks Caleb. It was about oh, time. Mm-hmm. And then and the net scene. When yeah. they have sex yeah. on the, and the goalie net. Those were my two favorite scenes. Yeah. But all like you guys said, all of them were so good. Mm-hmm. So good. Look, this book had me feeling things that I've never felt before and right. wanting things that I never right. thought I wanted before. And I'm right. just like, well, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Do you get why Nikki and I were saying we felt painfully single and depressed? <laughs> yeah, after now I get it. <laughs> Are you kidding? I told my husband, I'm like tabbing things. I'm like, honey, I was like, we're going to be busy. <laughs> He's like, I love it. <laughs> he's like, all right, just tell me what to do. Yeah, I was just like, I'm I mean, reading the great book, man. And I'm like, I can't even find one. And this bitch got three. Like, this is not fair. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Real life, too. Like, where, where do where do people find other people who are cool with like, I'm gonna fuck you three, but you three cannot go fuck other women. Right. Right. I where hi I mean to be fair she was okay with them fucking each other well each other (laughs) yes but not outside of them I think she would have been okay with them I think she would have too I I think think if Tess is gonna be involved somewhere down the line (laughs) well it would have to be Tess and Langley Langley. yeah (laughs) I don't Tess said she didn't want to feel like a Twinkie without Uh, oh she had God. some really funny one liners. Oh, yes. yeah. oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Called what did she call? She called Rachel's vagina her like super kitty or something. <laughs> oh boy, I love Tess. Yeah, I really can't wait for her book. I'm so excited to read her story. And like, I love Langley too because he seems like a damn golden retriever. All mm-hmm. for real. I'm all about that. All right, so let's get into the questions about the book. We have a few that are like specifically for this book, and then we'll do like our standard bookish questions. So the first one is we had our opinions of Rachel and Jake from that one night, right? You know, at the end, we kind of like hated Rachel for leaving him. Did your opinions from that one night of Rachel and Jake change after reading Pucking Around? They did. I, 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 like I said in the first, um, the last review, I didn't hate her. I just felt like she was very jaded. Like she was very like standoffish and her heart was just like closed off. So I'm glad that in this book, she actually gave it a chance and didn't shut it down. If she would have shut that shit down in this book, it would have been over. Like I'd have been like, girl, (laughs) you and I are going to fight. Like you're going to catch these hands. She but, was yeah. trying to shut it down in the beginning. Yeah, she I'm was like, due to her profession, like, you know, her <laughs> but, profession or whatever. But yeah, which I get. Jake yeah. was like, uh, nah, son, that's not happening. I love how he's like, <laughs> I'm going to slow burn the fuck out of you. <laughs> he was basically, he had a whole plan. He was like, we're going to go to HR. We're going to sign these papers. I don't care what oh, we I have know. to do. It's not ha- like you. I'm not giving you up again. Yeah. So yeah. I he's love like- Jake in the fir- in, in that one night and I fell in love with him even harder and fucking around. Totally agree. Yeah, I. The only thing that changed about him is that I loved him even more. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. Everything he said, everything he thought. Uh, yes. And then his love for Caleb too. Uh, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All about yeah. it. Same. I just love, love like more. how he's just gay for Caleb, not anybody mm-hmm. else. He's like, I can't be with any other man. Like, I'm not gay. What are you talking about? I just love Caleb. It was. Mm-hmm. It was just so cute. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So this one's going to be hard. I'm giving you a fair warning. This is going to be a hard question. (laughs) If you had to choose just one of the guys, which one would you pick? I would pick Ilmari. Yep. (laughs) So (laughs) I actually thought about that question. And the reason is because he's this big Viking manly man, just like take me over his shoulder and do what he will with me Mm -hmm. and i don't know why but the breeding thing got me Mm kind of hot i was like what (laughs) am i into breeding (laughs) he has a breeding kink yeah see, i liked him because he was that perfect combination of rough in the bed and then but sweet sweet right after right and i'm just like "Mm." yeah i loved his like 
I don't know how to describe this. I'm just going to like give it a scene from the, you know, when he went to touch Caleb's dick and he's like, can I touch it? And Caleb's yeah. like, you want to touch my dick? He goes, and Dick is like, are you touching it- his dick? No, but <laughs> Elmari goes, if you're amenable. And it was like, <laughs> random. Like he's still asking consent all over, yes. like everyone. But he was yes. so intrigued by it. And I love when he just like says things that he, Oh my God. What, what was he? I think he said the DVP when he meant to say DLP and yeah. she starts laughing. He goes, what? Is it a sex thing? <laughs> yeah. And it's so innocent because, it, right. because of the fact that he's Finnish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Loved that. I, I love Elmari too, but I don't know. Jake's puppy dog, like all about it. I'm, I have a hard time. Like I, if I could mix the two of them together, if I like could mix all three guy. of them together, they would be the perfect man. <laughs> The, the puppy dog of Jake, the daddy of Caleb, and then just everything of um Ilmari. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with Jake, though, if I had to pick one. Yeah, if I have to pick, I'm picking Jake. But I think reality is I'd probably end up with Cal or Kay, Caleb. <laughs> really? You think so? I yeah, think he's she a cat. Would. I'm a cat. Oh, yeah. my God. The fucking cat clothes. <laughs> yeah. He really is. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. When she compared him to a cat, I was fucking dying. <laughs> but yeah, my my perfect dream is just mixing all of them or mm-hmm. having one of each, you know. but whichever comes first. But yeah. Oh my god, having one of each would be a dream. Amazing. I I'd die happy. So along the lines of picking one of the guys, um, I want to know your all of your thoughts on this because I think yes do you think that rachel loved one of the guys more than the others ilmari i thought ilmari too i thought yeah same Same. so the the reason being is because i felt like she loved the other guys but i felt the other guys loved each other like jake is like yeah you're my you know you're my future blah 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 but he was really like in love with k so like with her relationship with Ilmari it was just like you could tell especially like being that that's who she married considering that Jake was like oh I'm gonna marry you he got married to Caleb and she got married to Ilmari but I love how they all took her last name I was like why can't somebody take my last name yeah so yeah yeah I definitely think she loved him more yeah that was that was my thoughts too that Ilmari was like the I don't know when she wore his jersey first, even though Jake had been asking, I was like, this breaks no, heart. Poor Jake. Like, Jake was so upset by it. So I'm like, okay. And then she was just kind of like, oh, he'll be fine. And like, she wasn't really like taking his feelings into account, knowing he would be upset by that. And then there were just certain things that she would say about Omari that mm-hmm. like, just made me feel like she loved him more than the others. Right. And I agree. I think she kind of let herself love him more because she knew that, k and jake had each other Mm -hmm. but i also was like no they have to like share their love evenly (laughs) i I also felt like she kind of went like more like above and beyond for him yeah what i mean like she everything that she did for him putting her job on the line because like doing everything secretively um as far as like his mris and all that stuff um i was just like yeah she definitely like She's vibing with him a lot more than not. She loves him more than the other two. Not really vibing because they were all vibing together. Yeah. Sarah, the way, the, oh, sorry. No, the way the way that I saw it was that she loved Amari more because of the fact that he needed her and needed her because she was the only one that paid attention to right. him, especially when it came to like his health and everything. And she put him first so he Mm -hmm. actually needed her and he was the only one that genuinely like needed her right and i think sometimes that need helps you bond to somebody you know even closer yeah yeah no that's that's a good point i didn't really think of that but that's true because he was like alone before her Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was just saying jake did try to keep putting him back in the group chat though he was like no (laughs) like really cute when when, um when they first brought Elmari over and they were like kind of figuring out how it was gonna go and they were like Elmari are you gonna move in and he was like no and Caleb said no and Jake was like so what you're just gonna like have sex with Rachel and then she's gonna be over here and never the two shall meet (laughs) (laughs) the way he phrased up was so funny but yeah Yeah. 
I love that he just he wanted them to be a unit the whole time. Mm-hmm. I love I love Jake's love. <laughs> I, I do. I do. He's a puppy. He is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about Poseidon though and how I love Poseidon? Like oh, I needed more Poseidon. <laughs> he was just so cute. Mm-hmm. Love him. Yeah. I I want Sarah to bring I want Sarah to talk about this because you brought up with the MRI with Elmari and how she was giving him more care Sarah tell them what you told me about with with Caleb so my only um thing in this book that I was sad about was you didn't help him yeah no plot happened with her being a doctor and helping him I, yeah. I understand like you know from a therapy perspective there's only so much you can do but she I didn't mean, even what try. Was the point? Like, right. I just thought that was the whole I, point. I, I thought He'd at that least too. be like pain free. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I what? thought that too. That was another like, um, what made me realize that you know, like that's why I said she went above and beyond for Ilmari because even yeah. with Caleb, she didn't really like. She didn't even like feed into it. Not even a little bit. Not like you know, maybe I can help you. Maybe I can you know, shit. Let me give you some stretches or something. To help your 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 leg, it was nothing at yeah, all. Totally. He even during sex was like, get on right. your knees, knowing what right. his knees hurt. Him. <laughs> like, bitch, fuck your knee. I don't care. Get down. Get down. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh anytime a dog is in a scene and then they like don't mention the dog again, I'm like, well, where did the dog? Where go? did he go? What is he doing? <laughs> is he watching? Is he in the kitchen? Is he laying down? Where is he? There was I love, one. I I love the fact that they lock them in the room <laughs> and they're like. <laughs> He should not be watching this. <laughs> but I do love that Emily, the author, included afterward how she went and let him out. I'm like, okay, I'm yeah. glad that like somebody let the dog out of the room after the sex scene. <laughs> uh, I think we already answered this question because we kind of <laughs> talked about this. But would you guys ever want to be in a wide shoes romance? Hell yes, hell yes, without question. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Any yeah, avail- any anyone like available? This. Hi. No. It has to be like this. Right. If it's yeah. not like this, then no. Yeah. I But I agree with Rachel's chain of train of thought that humans are complex creatures. It is a kind of foreign thought that like one person can satisfy your every need. And granted, I know that it happens. Like people are monogamous ra- relationships all the time. But I do understand her thought. Like this guy satisfies this part of my life. This one satisfies this part of my life and things like that. So I can get it. I see it. Funny mm-hmm. enough, after reading this book, I think I might be Polly. Like, honestly. We support it. I support mm-hmm. it too. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need a Jake, a Caleb, and a Omari. Please mm-hmm. and thank you. I'd be fine with them all fucking each other too. I'm mm-hmm. cool with that. Like, even if all three of More them are the weren't. merrier. I don't give a shit. As long as <laughs> I'm involved in that. Cool. Right. Exactly. So those were all the questions that um, we had specifically to this book. But I do kind of want to go through our other questions that we normally do for our books because I think that they are good to go. But I think they're relevant to this. one. <laughs> so let's first start with, is there anything in this book you could have lived without? Her talking <laughs> about her father all the fucking time. Yeah, it could have been shorter. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. I have two things, actually, three things I could have lived without in this book. <laughs> like everything, everything came down to, oh, my father is this famous musician, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we get it. We got it the first time and the second time and the third and every time after that. Like, okay, we get it, girl. Cool. Yeah. I, I felt like she was too, at times, she was too, like, woe is me. Yes. Oh, my life was so <clears> hard, girl. Like, I feel like it was just too much. And I'm like, all right, girl, I get it. Like, boohoo, you had a but, dad. Yeah. Like, how hard could your life possibly have been? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, <laughs> like, you're not, you're not the first, you know, child of a rich daddy right. that, you know, because you were tripping on some loose. fucking shrooms. Fuck out of here. Like, get out of here. <laughs> So what what drove me nuts with Rachel was the like girl who cries wolf thing. How there were multiple times that she was like, "I don't want to ruin your okay. life," oh, and they yes. had to like beg her to stay. And I wanted to give Caleb a fucking high five Hell, at, at the end, end. when yeah. he was like, "No," he was like, he was "No, like, fuck this, yeah, let's go." We're not gonna beg if she her. wants to leave, <laughs> let her fucking leave. Like mm-hmm. he had it, he exactly. fucking had it. Yep. He was like, "Fuck this." He was like, "We're gonna go watch TV. If she's still here, cool. If she's not, fuck it." I yeah, it is what that, it is. 
that was uh, like seriously the best thing you could like jake was should not have been begging her he's right if somebody wants mm-hmm. you wants to yep. be with you they will fight for what you have she was just and it happened like a multiple times where she did that and it's like mm-hmm. come on these guys yeah. are telling you they love you they want to be with you they'll fight to be with you like they gave you no inclination that they're upset about that you know they'll be in the limelight even more than they already are so right. i could have definitely done without that right. um I could have done without so much finish during the sex scenes because for me, (laughs) I have to like translate it every time I see it. So like it would take me out of the scene sometimes. Like I thought it was hot, but at the same time, like my ADHD brain was like, what what is he saying right right now? Like I can't keep going until I know what he's saying to her. (laughs) Oh, I could have, I could have lived without the bird feeding cum. That's one of that was my three. The fucking mommy bird feeding the cum scene. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I yeah. Just, and as Sarah was... Sarah said, like, how? How did he do that? Like that that's that skill. Like to hold it in your mouth and, uh, uh, and then just for our listeners, what happened in this scene was <laughs> Jake, you're like, what the fuck? Jake is sucking Caleb's dick for the first time ever, by the way. So Caleb's like, you know, you're going to take my dick like a good fucking boy. And at the end, you're going to swallow my cum. Rachel says, no, you're not. You're going to keep that cum in your mouth. Then you're going to spit it in my mouth. And then I'm going to use it (laughs) as lubrication to suck your dick. And then she did that. And then Jake came in her mouth. So now she's got Caleb and Jake's cum in her mouth. And then what does she do? She has Jake and Caleb sit on their knees and she dribbles it into their mouth like a mommy bird feeding her baby birds. Yeah. I I could have lived without that. (laughs) Just like I'm imagining it just Just coming out everywhere while she's trying to give Jake head. (laughs) Everywhere. There was nothing sexy about that scene to me. Like, no, that was definitely one of the... (laughs) Oh, scenes I could have done with that. Yeah. I was really happy Jake finally sucked Caleb's dick. Could have done without the come play afterward. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> so now you all know what that scene is. <laughs> um, Lori, how about you? Anything you could have done without in this book? Oh, I already said mine. Oh, did wait, did you? Wait, yeah, with Rachel mm-hmm. saying, like, the Rachel's all woe is me and always complaining about her poor, rich upbringing. I swear, my brain. <laughs> Did anybody not say theirs? Was I the last to go? Did Sarah go? I don't I think don't Sarah know. went. <laughs> Sarah, you don't. Know oh no! Had... I said it was too long. I said it could have been short. Oh, oh yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> so yeah, so everyone. <laughs> that just we. You went in detail with the scene, so I was a little. <laughs> she, she was like, "I'm out of here. Don't want to hear it." Yeah. <laughs> Blocking it out for the second time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Where are we? Because now my brain is like. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. So was this plot or character driven? I think it was more character than plot. Yeah, character. There wasn't a lot of plot. Well, yeah. then again, I wasn't expecting too much plot from this book. Right. So, right. you know, yeah. but it was Which still good. It was too long. Right. It was like, yeah. When- I see a contemporary hockey romance. I'm thinking like max 350 pages. A seven, it's literally double that. It was totally unnecessary. It literally was just it all was. sex. That's all it was. <laughs> it was sex and a little, a little bit of you know this like here doctor ring little, in between, <laughs> right? It, that yeah, but I loved it. I'm not gonna lie. I loved oh yeah, it. yeah, but yeah, yeah. It could have been mm-hmm. a lot shorter. Yeah, if you took out every time Rachel was like, I don't want you guys to ruin your life. You probably right. knocked it down like 200 pages. <laughs> oh, because pages. my dad is, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did like that her dad performed at the game at the end. That mm-hmm. was cool. That was cool. Uh, did you guys think there was strong character development throughout the book? For certain characters, yeah. Yeah. I think Omari certainly had some strong character yeah, development. He did. Caleb he did. too, I think. Yeah. Caleb, yeah. Yeah. I think there's more to Jake than what was presented to us. Or at least I believe there could be more to him. I agree. He's like, he's literally like a puppy dog. Like he's like, love me, love me, love me. Mm-hmm. Just following Seattle all over. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, did you think the characters were lovable? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Super. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think all the main characters and even the side characters, yes. Tess, Langley, Morrow, mm-hmm. Novi, Poppy. Like- yeah, that's her yeah, name, right? Poppy. Poppy. 
Okay. Yeah, like all the characters. I I loved when Maro and Novi kind of cornered Caleb in the yeah, laundry oh room, God, and they were like, so... "We support you, right?" Whatever like you guys are doing. They were like, "You let us know. Like we'll fuck somebody up if they yeah. like talking shit." But yeah, love is love, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, all the characters were lovable, mm-hmm. even the side characters. I loved in the beginning, like how they were calling her hot doctor. Everybody was like going ape shit. Like, have you seen her? Have you seen her? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, we kind of just answered this, but was there a diverse cast of characters? I think there was. Yeah, there was a lot of oh, characters. Yeah. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. I like that even the side characters had like you kind of knew their personalities, even mm-hmm. though you didn't get a whole lot from them. You you knew each of them. Right. I'm really excited to see them in the next book. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how they come about. So this is going to be the hardest. Oh, Sarah, you put friend zone. We can't kill We can't kill them. Friends. Alyssa. <laughs> we can't kill any of our you book boyfriends. Shut ever. The audacity. <laughs> you're you're hard, really upset but- of this if you say that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to choose. So I guess we're doing fuck, Mary friend zone. Hell yes. <laughs> can't kill our boyfriend jake caleb and elmari so Mm. let's start with jake i'm gonna marry jake mary as much as friend friend zone zone. (laughs) i love him but i have to friend zone (laughs) all right caleb fuck fuck i'm friend zoning caleb oh i'm fucking him elmari is a fuck for me elmari is marrying friend zone all the way I was the only one that was not the Ilmari girl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like blondes, remember? Right. <laughs> oh, I, I, he was blonde. Okay, like, but what oh, if I, everything stopped for me when I heard like right. big bear with yeah. tattoos? I'm like, fuck yes. Okay, <laughs> well, what if he was brunette? I don't care. That's fine. No, I, 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 no I'm she asking was, Gary. Oh, oh. <laughs> she said she doesn't like blondes. What if he was brunette? Oh, this is like he's all mine. What totally if he was? <laughs> what if he was a brunette Puerto Rican? Yeah, you oh, know, that's shit. my type. Yeah, that's like her catnip right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Pussy nip. nip. laughs> Throwback. If you know, you, you can't know. even say you don't like blondes anymore. Your boyfriend dyed his hair blonde. <laughs> he did. He is now a blonde for really? Yeah. Yeah. He was he like, made, like, well, like well, it, that's so true. So he, gonna do it. he made me change my mind on that, I guess. <laughs> He's like, you don't like blondes? Ha! Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So. That is our review of Pucking Around. If you guys have read it, let us know what you think of it in the comments. And if you plan to read it, let us know that as well. And you have to read it because we said so. (laughs) And let us know who your (laughs) Buckberry friend zone is. (laughs) Ooh, yes. Good Mm -hmm. idea. Tell Mm -hmm. us who's your favorite. Tell us all the things, you know? All of that. So next week, we are going to be discussing unpopular bookish opinions. That'll be a fun one. Don't hate us Mm -hmm. for it. (laughs) (laughs) So buckle up, bookworms. We'll see you next week. Bye.